directly across the water here is going to be our destination for today. That's right. We are going we are going to Springfield. The Simpsons. Or should I say Chris the girl. Greetings from Springfield, USA. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back. As you can tell, we are here at Universal Studios, Florida, Orlando. Specifically though, Springfield, USA, or rather just right outside of Springfield, USA. You can still see the, some of the remnants of what used to be the Back to the Future, which is what that area, yeah, used to be. But we are not talking about Back to the Future, not not today. Today is going to be all about the Simpsons and Springfield and that whole area of the park in there specifically. Now I have mentioned this a couple of times on the channel, but I am a huge fan, huge fan of the Simpsons. It is one of my most favorite TV shows of all time, if not my most favorite period, hands down. The whole point of today is basically to just walk through Springfield and, um, and just show you different things throughout there, point them out, show them um, what they are in the show, how they correspond with the actual show, and um, hopefully shed some light on what all of that stuff even is and why it's there. This video is, uh, it's not only meant for people who are Simpsons fans, um, but it's meant for everybody. It's meant for people who have maybe never watched The Simpsons in their life or have never even been here to Universal. It's for everyone. I'm hoping to make this a very kind of general video so you can all enjoy and understand what, uh, what exactly is going on back in there in Springfield. So, without further ado, let's get on in there. Let's, let's go. I'm actually gonna start right here, kind of in the center of Springfield with Jebediah Springfield. So Jebediah Springfield is the founder of our fair city. And uh, just like in the actual, quote unquote, actual Simpsons, in the actual show, uh, they do have a statue, a Jebediah Springfield statue, just like this. Jebediah Springfield is actually mentioned several times in several different episodes in The Simpsons. One of my favorites being Lisa the Iconoclast. Uh, that's one of my favorite episodes actually oh. of all time. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome uh, that they've included it here, like I said, in Simpsons Land in Springfield. It's good. Very good, I like it. A lot of you may know this guy as one of the main things here in Simpsons Land. There's also a stand right, right behind him there where they sell really delicious, surprisingly delicious donuts that are like the size of your head. But um, I think it's actually kind of interesting because the Lard Lad Donut Guy only appears, as far as I know, at least in one episode, um, or at least the first episode that he's ever introduced in is actually a Treehouse of Horror Simpsons episode. And I can't remember the season off the top of my head, but all of the um, like icons and signs and stuff like that, they all come to life and wreak havoc on the city. And that's the first time we see the Lard Lad. He comes to life. I think he's uh, modeled after the big boys, those classic big boy statues. In that episode too, it, it is actually an establishment, a donut establishment. The Lard Lad Donuts. Mmm, sprinkles. An example of the donut there for you. Very classic, regular looking donut with the strawberry frosting and the sprinkles on there. It's actually incredibly good. Usually Chief Wiggum hangs around over here. There's like a statue of Chief Wiggum hanging out by, of course, the Lard Lad Donuts area. Chief Wiggum, like a bumbling policeman character on the show. Absolutely hilarious. But uh, I haven't seen him around here for a little while. I wonder if they took him down maybe specifically for Horror Nights to have more like foot traffic through here. I'm not really sure, but I hope he comes back. These, uh, these little boxes here don't exactly, uh, they don't exactly do it for me like Chief Wiggum did. Bumblebee Man's taco truck is right next to the Lard Lad Donut Spot. 
as well. Now I don't think that the Bumblebee Man had a taco truck in the in the show, at least not in the earlier seasons. So I think it's just a it's just another restaurant or just another uh, eatery where you can get some food. Uh, obviously tacos. It is a taco truck. Bumblebee Man is one of the characters from the show as well. He he does like a Spanish like soap opera type deal and uh, one of my favorite things about Bumblebee Man in particular is that no matter what he's doing, no matter what he's saying, because he always talks, he usually always talks in Spanish, you can always understand what he's saying and what the what the point is that they're trying to get across, which is pretty, it's pretty hilarious and pretty ingenious that the animators and the writers are, are able to do that. And right behind me, inside of this big green building here, not only hosts the restrooms, but it also stands for, it looks like a line to get inside where some of the, uh, the food options are, which we're gonna go check out uh, in a sec here. But the building itself on the outside here is actually, well, the name of it is, it's right there, the Androids Dungeon and Baseball Card Shop. This is the comic book shop that uh, the comic book guy works at in the show. Take me to your comic books and baseball cards. Sign here on this door that actually does not operate, at least I don't I don't think it does, it says sorry we're closed for bi month sci-fi con, which is actually one of the episodes in The Simpsons. One of my most favorite ones actually of all time. It's in season 10 if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Mark Hamill is the special guest star in that episode and it is hilarious as you may or may not be able to tell it's uh it's uh the first half of it at least is about a convention i have a like a science fiction convention it is hilarious trust me it's one of my favorites this guy in the window here looks just like what it looks like in the uh in the show look inside here you can see that they have indeed some rare baseball cards for sale in here also 25% off comics there's a, a zebra girl comic in there beauty battles the jungle king and a zoidzilla comic as well and of course radioactive man that one in the back radioactive man versus swamp hag and then this one here, Radioactive Man, issue number 1000. Radioactive Man is like the show's like superhero. It's not, he doesn't like actually appear in the show except like a couple of times, but uh, it's more about the comics. Radioactive Man comics in the show that Bart and Milhouse are always jonesing after. On the side of Moe's Tavern here, someone has graffito tagged. El Barto was here. Gee, I wonder who that could be. Actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, unless they bring it back in the newer episodes, the whole, like, El Barto thing was more of, like, a season one, maybe even season two sort of thing, and then it never really came back, but all throughout the rest of, like, the seasons, every now and then you'll see, you'll see the graffito tags of El Barto directly across from Moe's Tavern. I guess it makes sense. They have sort of recreated the the Duff Beer Brewery. Duff Beer can't get enough of that wonderful Duff. Duff Beer is the beer of choice for Homer Simpsons and his pals, of course, in the show. Side of the building here, you can even see it says Duff Brewery, Duff Gardens, hurrah! I see some signs in there that says Duff Oktoberfest. Oh, Duff Toberfest, excuse me. I wonder if that's a specifically October thing or if they're always there, honestly. I never really paid attention, but uh, of course you can come up in here, sit at the bar if you want, or uh, grab a beer and some food. One of my favorite things about Simpsons Land in general is that they have TVs in different areas throughout the land and they always play different clips from different episodes, different relevant episodes of The Simpsons. Like I think here they're just doing like general like theme park and then of course Duff Beer 
clips as well because hey we're at the we're at the Duff Brewery. They gotta they gotta show that. And right out front of the Duff Brewery, they have the seven Duffs. There's three of them here, and then there's four over to the right. I'll go show those in a sec. But these are from uh, actually one of my again most favorite episodes of all time, where they go to Duff Gardens, which is like a theme park that's based around the beer. Duff beer and it is hilarious. Hilarious. And uh, the seven Duffs are kind of like parodying the seven dwarfs over at Disney. But uh, looks like he, so we got Edgy here, we got Remorseful, and uh, we got Dizzy over there as well. And then over on this side, you have Tipsy, Surly, Queasy. And, uh, and sleazy. So as you can tell, these are kind of like the different like moods that one could be when they are perhaps intoxicated. Surly is, of course, the best one. Hey, Surly only looks out for one god, Surly. And also, why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer. It's a couple quotes from from the show. Oh, and I happen to look up, and they're actually playing. They're playing that exact scene right now. Sorry, I'm in the shadows, you couldn't see it, but it's when they were at Duff Gardens. Duff Gardens, hurrah! This is actually pretty funny here. Right next to the bar area here, they actually have the Duff Vats in here, or you know, the replicas of the Duff Vats. And um, in the actual Duff Brewery, uh, in one of the episodes where Homer actually tries to give up beer, if you can believe it, they have the three vats. One of them is just regular Duff, and then Duff Light, and then Duff Dry. But the gag is that all, all three vats are, it's all coming from the same spot. So it's, it's all, uh, it's all the same beer. Spoiler alert. Merchant Simpsons Land is one of my favorite things too, although I honestly think that they could do a heck of a lot more if they really wanted to, but Hey, at least you can get some stuff like these uh, these Duff hats here. That's pretty legit. You can also get like a Duff beer quality control shirt here. It kind of looks like you like work at the factory or something like that. Maybe you're checking the beer to make sure there's no uh, bad stuff in there like syringes or severed heads or rats. It's actually from the show. I didn't make all that up, I swear. And they even have koozies for Lady Duff, one of the types of Duff beers that they reference at least a couple times in the show. That's actually hilarious. I have I have never noticed that before. This is interesting. I didn't know that they had this, but they have little vinyls in here, one of those little mystery box type deals. So you got Barney, you got Duff Man. You got Mo, of course. Oh, and look at that. He has his million dollar fries basket fries on top of his head. That's a deep cut and that is amazing. There's one episode where Mo decides to turn his tavern into a family style restaurant and of course hilarity ensues. So that's where that one's from. And uh, we got some of their pals, their bar fly pals in there, a mystery figure and of course you gotta have the love tester, the classic love tester as well. And of course we have to say hello to the man himself, Duffman. He appears in a number of different episodes, absolutely hilarious. He's basically the mascot and like party dude kind of guy, hype man for Duff Beer, Duffman. Hang and Kodos Twirl and Hurl. This is one of the rides here in Simpsons Land and it's one of my favorites. Not that I can ride it or anything like that, but just the overall theming of it is pretty darn fantastic. And just check out the uh, the measurement stick here so they can measure the riders to make sure they're tall enough. I love that it has like all of the little baby aliens in here as well. That's adorable. In the queue line, they have this sign here. Please do not be frightened. We do not like the way frightened tastes. And in the corner, please tell people how great this ride is before you go on it for no particular reason. There's another sign that you encounter throughout the line. Don't worry, there is still more line. It's just one of the things that like 
makes Simpsons Land so clever. Obviously, it's a very, very clever show. Absolutely hilarious. And I love that they include those elements in the rides and just in the overall theming in general. I mean, it's not going to be Simpsons Land if it's not like cheeky and, you know, if it's not funny. You know, it's got to be funny to be Simpsons Land. Okay, so it's hard to tell because we're in the shadows and far away. This is as close as I could get, but there are TV screens inside of the queue for this for this ride and it looks like they are playing clips they're playing clips from different uh, treehouse of horror shows which is amazing the treehouse of horror shows or basically their halloween special shows are some of my most favorites of all time at the simpsons i guess i've said that a lot this is my most favorite episode of all time but they are welcome to easy tourist to kang and Cody's tour as you can tell by my soothing voice this will be a pleasant ride without anything evil or nefarious please fasten your seatbelts and remain seated just relax and enjoy the full sincerity of everything i say and suspect nothing so kang and kodos and specifically their alien species um, again, at least as far as I know in the earlier seasons, uh, they only appear in the Treehouse of Horror Halloween episodes. And they appear in every single one from the very, very beginning of Treehouse of Horror. So here goes the ride. I guess the point is, is like they're pretending to be like humans, quote unquote, but you're actually destroying like Springfield citizens there. You can see there, there's Bart and uh, Nelson and whatnot. And so you're able to like shoot the, shoot whatever it is on the spaceship there and uh, try to get as how many, uh, how many humans as you can. And of course, Kang and or Kodos there is uh, shouting all kinds of various phrases and whatnot. It's just so really, it's just really clever. I don't know. It's this is like the perfect ride for Simpsons Land, in my opinion. I may be a little biased because I do love Trias of Horror, but it's a great, great ride for the kiddos. Right now, we are inside of the uh, restaurant that has like a bunch of quick service options in here. I wanted to show this mural on the side of the wall here. Lots of people in here, so I'm trying to respect their food eating privacy, but there you go. It's got a bunch of the citizens, of course, of Springfield on there. Such a cool, cool mural. Very nice. Of course, on the TV screens, they have the Simpsons playing different clips of the Simpsons and the ones that they have playing in here or of course them eating at various restaurants. There's a lot of restaurants that are featured on the Simpsons and a couple of them are actually here inside of this building. One of the places that they have in here is called Lisa's Tea House of horror now this isn't actually a restaurant that's featured in the show but the treehouse of horror of course we were just talking about that just kind of a play off of that check it out on the screen right now they're featuring the frying dutchman episode one of my favorites again so good all you can eat seafood we're going to talk about that in a sec they also have luigi's which is an actual restaurant inside of springfield an italian restaurant run by Luigi there, the Frying Dutchman as we were just talking about. I love that they even have the neon sign there. So good. Cletus's Chicken Shack, which actually isn't featured in the show, at least as far as I know. Krusty Burger is over there as well, featured many, many, many times. Probably the most out of any of the restaurants, I would wager. Krusty Burger is like a McDonald's sort of sort of deal, fast food restaurant. And then uh, they have a Flaming Moe's over in the corner as well. Flaming Moe's are actually something that uh, it has a whole, there's a whole episode based off of Flaming Moe's. The Neon Sciences happiness is just a Flaming Moe's away. That episode is fantastic. It is a classic. Uh, one of the guest stars for it is uh, Aerosmith. Aerosmith is in that episode. And um, basically Homer creates a drink called the Flaming Homer. Secret ingredient is cough syrup and, and they light it on fire and it actually tastes good. 
but uh, Mo ends up taking the drink over and uh, claiming it as his own, and his bar starts skyrocketing to uh, to success. And um, it actually also unlocks Cheers, the show Cheers as well, and it's just it's fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. They've got some signage up here as well it says bar and stool magazine through the roof and there's a you can actually buy a flaming mo here which is pretty neat too this tavern is of course the classic of the show as well and you can actually go inside get a duff beer hang out inside of homer's most favorite place in the whole world the mo Tavern. Puma Pride, Springfield Elementary. I like that they have this pennant here on the side of the wall. That's the mascot for Springfield Elementary School. Here you go, right next to the classic love tester here that you can actually play if you want to. Uh, there's a sign that says Moe's Tavern, birthplace of the Flaming Mo, which of course again isn't true. Homer actually invented the Flaming Mo. And the actual bar, the tavern in here, looks basically exactly the same as what it looks like in the uh, in the show. You got the, the bar here that you actually can sit up at and get a drink, get a Duff beer, and the love tester is actually here in the corner as well. And of course Barney with his empty glass there looking very sad. Even have a jukebox here as well that is of course out of, out of order. I don't think usually the wipes are on top of it though. That, that may just be a universal thing. I also really like this sign. I never noticed this before. Duff, you know you want it. I like that it has Blinky up at the top in there too. And on this wall here, you got a bunch of stuff. You got Homer and his softball team. Again, one of the best uh, episodes of them all playing softball. And uh, down below that, you got the Pin Pals, where Homer um, starts a bowling team. Up there, the Shelbyville Shel Shelby Villains. <laughs> uh, Shelbyville is their rival town and then the capital city capitals pennant which is another whole episode one of the very uh near the very beginning of the show homer goes to capital city and uh, takes over being a, a mascot there in capital in in capital city so a lot of the stuff on here inside of most tavern and just everywhere in general there's there is a meaning behind it there's an episode there's an episode behind it. And right in front of the Quickie Mart, we have a sign here that says Evergreen Terrace, which is the street that the Simpsons live on, as well as Fast Food Boulevard, which is, I don't think, the actual street inside of the Simpsons. At least not that I'm aware of, but it's pretty cool that they have this sign here right out front of the Quickie Mart. So we're gonna head, we're gonna head inside, check out the Quickie Mart here. The Quickie Mart is a very small, store inside here of the Simpsons. It's basically one of the only places you can get merchandise and whatnot. But uh, it's very, very well themed in here. They've got a bunch of different products that uh, that's actually featured in the Simpsons, which is one of my most favorite things personally. The products that they have are always hilarious. And no, I don't mean actual products that you can purchase, like these adorable little Simpson stuffies here, but like the, the fake stuff up top of here. Like we've got crusty reusable goo tips, much ado about stuffing, frosted crusty O's, and of course, wadded beef. Cheesy does it, jolly gummy bears, nature's own cat litter, ham ahoy, Buzz Cola, which is the cola in the in the Simpsons world, and check it out—they even have Krusty's cough syrup, which is the secret ingredient of the, the Flaming Mo. That's that's awesome. By the way, if you don't want to wait at the actual Lard Lad Donut stand, you can buy them here. I can't guarantee how fresh they are, but they do they do have them here as well as these. Farmer Billy's Choco Bacon Bars and uh, Krusty Clump Bar and oh, Bobo's Gummy Bears. That's hilarious, actually. Bobo is Mr. Burns's teddy bear from when he was a child, and uh, Maggie Simpson somehow gets a hold of them. This is all from an episode. There's a whole episode based off of Bobo. 
Mr. Burns' bear. That is, that is hilarious. I think most people understand that the Quickie Mart, what the Quickie Mart is in The Simpsons, even if you've never seen it before, more than likely you have probably heard of the Quickie Mart, or a poo, or thank you, come again, the classic, his classic line. Whoa, that's good, squishy. You can even buy squishies here, not at the Quickie Mart for some reason, although you can get the cup for it. You actually can get a squishy over across the street. This is pretty hilarious though, mango chutney explosion. They have a lot of really deep cuts here, I am noticing, in Simpsons land. Like, if, if you watch the show, you get it. If you don't, you, you would never even, like, notice what this means or have any idea. Not to shame the people who have never seen Simpsons or don't know why the mango chutney explosion is hilarious to me, but I'm just simply pointing out that, like, there's a lot of hidden details. Maybe not hidden, but, like, you know, in the corner details here in Simpsons Land, and I, I really love it. I really appreciate it. Noticing on the bottle of uh, Krusty's cough syrup here, it says right on the corner, secret ingredient of the flaming mo. Oh no, that's not doesn't make it much of a secret anymore now, does it? Fun fact: because it is a Halloween Horror Nights evening, the park closes at five o'clock for Halloween Horror Nights, and uh, apparently they closed this section off, uh, let's see, 3.43, so they close it off like an hour and a half before the park actually closes. I was totally gonna go in there and like get a squishy, but uh, I guess that's, uh, that's not gonna happen. So, very, uh, very interesting. There you go, folks. They even have a pay phone right outside of the Quickie Mart here with Nelson. Oh, it's ringing. Okay, we're gonna pick it up and see. You can hear, um, my boy Ralphie has locked me in my own jail cell. He's dead running around with a ring of keys in his mouth. Just tell him to come back, right? I have to run some errands today. My wife needs contact lens solution. <sighs> Thanks much. There you go. It actually works. Also noticing the side here says Skinner is a wiener. And uh, down here, looks like you say that he uh, he respectfully begs to differ. It's very nice handwriting Principal Skinner has. And of course you have all of the bullies over here as well. Looks like Chief Wiggum is trying to trying to bust him for the El Barto stuff. But of course we know it's Bart. It's actually Bart that's doing it. Now we are heading into the Krusty Land section of Simpsons Land. I don't believe Krusty Land is actually a thing inside of the show. I could be wrong. It's one of the late, uh, newer seasons. I, I don't, I'm not honestly sure. I'm, as If you could not tell by now, I'm the older seasons, seasons 1 through 13, 14 are more my wheelhouse than anything else, but uh, nonetheless, the games that they have here are actually based off of a lot of Simpsons stuff, as you can imagine. So like this one here, it looks like you are shooting baseballs into the, the Duff beer cans there, and oh, good job. And uh, these are the, the isotopes, it's based off of the, the Springfield isotopes, which is their baseball team. Right next to that one is the Aris She Throws, which I think is a sea captain based game. I can see them inside of there wrestling the, wrestling the octopus. Also, I gotta point out the dolphins that you can win here. I'm wondering if those are uh, based off of a Treehouse of Horror episode where dolphins basically take over Springfield and do mankind. Snorky! Talk! Man! I just have to point out that the prizes in here are legit. Check it out, there's the Iguana Jug Jug. Good job. Jug Jug is um, Aunt, uh, Aunt Patty and Selma's pet. Head iguana jub jub, and then of course Blinky, the three eyed, the famous three eyed fish, is one of the prizes as well. I want jub jub. That's freaking amazing. Wild and Willy, Willy being the uh, the janitor, the school janitor. Of course, looks like you just uh, hit the 
hit the, the willies in there. It looks like Ralph, Ralph Wiggum is one of the, the prizes. That is adorable. And Sideshow you here, as opposed to Sideshow Bob, one of the villains from The Simpsons. He's always trying to kill Bart. He returns and I think like every single season and is voiced by the famous Kelsey Grammer. That's one of the ones here too. It looks like you pop some balloons in there. And then Santa's little helper over here is one of the games as well. It's one of those classics you, you uh, uh, aim for the water inside of the target there and then try to win like one of the horse games there. I'm explaining that poorly. Y'all know what this game is. I don't have to explain it, but anyway, Santa's little helper is of course the Simpsons family dog and uh, he appears in like the absolute very first episode of The Simpsons. It's a Christmas show and uh, that's why his name is Santa's little helper. They rescue him from the, from the dog track which is why there's a bunch of dogs there that are racing. And there's a classic ball toss game over here as well and a catch a fish game too that looks like it has kind of based on again the famous Simpsons fish Blinky. It has three eyes because of the nuclear power plant by the way that is polluting the lake nearby nearby Springfield. The Simpsons ride which is of course what took over Back to the Future very sad. I know we all miss Back to the Future I do too, even though I never really liked the ride, to be quite honest. It was very, very rough. I only went on the Simpsons ride once, and again, very rough. Did not make me feel very good, so I'm not going to be doing that again. I was kind of hoping to go through the queue and show you stuff in the queue, but the wait time is 60 minutes. It is very busy today, so that's not going to happen today. I'll save that for another time, perhaps. I know there's a lot of Easter eggs and whatnot inside of the queue, uh, so we'll do that. We'll do that sometime. And here's just the rest of the games as well. Dunker Flunk, uh, of course, has Principal Skinner and uh, Mrs. Krabappel up there. Just your classic basketball game. Whack a Rat. Looks like that's based off of Itchy and Scratchy, the the cartoon show in The Simpsons. Mr. Burns' radioactive rings. Of course, Mr. Burns. Actually, Mr. Burns is maybe a hot take, but he's my favorite character in The Simpsons. My most favorite one, I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, but yeah, they have a game for him. He runs, of course, the nuclear power plant. And then I, Karumba, one of Bart's famous catchphrases over there. Looks like another basketball game. Just as an example, this huge poster up here right next to the Krusty Land sign says happy little elves in panda land the happy little elves is another cartoon in the simpsons geared more towards the little ones maybe more towards maggie simpson i know lisa simpson likes the happy little elves as well but there's the man himself just open up the queue to do a meet and greet with homer simpson I, uh, i'm not a meet and greet kind of gal so i'm gonna leave it to everybody else to say hello to good old Homer there, but he is adorable. I know they have the other characters too, Marge, Lisa, Bart. I saw Krusty over here earlier too, which is pretty legit. All of this is closed up now. Nobody in here, I'm guessing, so they can just kind of like cash out for the day, get ready for Halloween Horror Nights, but let me show ya. Zooming in. There's the squishy machines in there, so if you want to get a squishy, you can uh, you can do that here as well. Just make sure you do it before they close for Halloween or a night. All right, and I think that actually does it for the Simpsons, or at least as much uh, as I was able to do with the time constraints that I had and it being so busy, but it, you at least get the gist of it all. So I'm actually just gonna kinda walk around. I think I'm gonna head over to Islands of Adventure. Just kinda walk around uh, since that didn't take me as long as I thought maybe it would. And um, you know, I'm just gonna enjoy, just gonna enjoy the park, maybe get a coffee, maybe something to eat. And just enjoy it. Just enjoy being here at Universal. Spoiler alert, you may be seeing more Halloween Horror Nights content coming up 
very, very soon. We've made it inside of Islands of Adventure. I was sitting outside of the gates like I always do, trying to hear my favorite part of their entrance music, but it wasn't playing for some reason. Thankfully in here, it still is. Best theme park music ever. I had to stop and show this. There were uh, photos floating around after the hurricane, uh, pun intended there. Um, of theme parks and like various rides and stuff like that that were like straight up underwater and the Hulk is was one of them this whole that whole area there underneath the awning was completely underwater so if that roller coaster were to run a train would go directly like underwater into the water there pretty crazy I guess this whole uh, little lake here must have flooded into it there but Wow, yeah, that was one of the craziest pictures that I saw, at least theme park-wise. Now it's time to do one of my most favorite activities of all time. Watching people get absolutely drenched on water rides. Awesome. This video's coffee or pineapple passion fruit Starbucks refresher is thanks to my pal Lancelot. Again, thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate you. Cheers, I hope that you enjoy this one. I really appreciate it, really appreciate you. Thank you for, seriously, thank you for supporting the channel like you do, like you have been. I always love sitting here. This is like my favorite place now at Islands of Adventure, except for the entrance with the music. Though this is pretty good too. They're playing sea shanties here. I'm not mad about that. And that's actually going to do it for today's video. I'm actually gonna hang out here for a little bit longer, just kind of chill out. But in terms of the video, that, that, that does it for today. So hopefully you all enjoyed this. Um, even if you weren't a Simpsons fan, even if you've never been to Universal, even if you were the biggest Simpsons fan ever and you feel I didn't do this justice, um, hopefully you still enjoyed it anyway. Um, I tried to make it uh, enjoyable for everybody. I tried to make the video for everyone, no matter what your background is with the TV show. Um, for me as a theme park person who appreciates the finer details of things, I love that they put the time and effort into that area of the park to make it so legitimate towards the actual TV show. Um, and I think that that's worth celebrating and, and appreciating regardless, again, of what your background is with the show. So hopefully you all enjoyed it and uh, maybe even saw a different side of Universal that you haven't seen before yet. So if you like it, please let me know down in the comments below because I have some ideas of what I could do for other areas, not only here in Universal, but Disney and other places as well. So if you want to see more of this kind of content, as always, let me know below so I can uh, plan, plan ahead and make more videos like this. So in any case, thank you all for watching. Really, really appreciate it as always. Uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for engaging with the channel. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. It seriously means the world to me. And um, I just can't thank you all enough. So anyway, we will see you very soon. Got a lot of spooky content coming up here. We're going to get back into the spooky stuff. Um, spooky shopping and all of that good stuff as well. So yeah. Stay tuned for all of that. I'm really, really excited. A lot of stuff coming up here and I'm, I'm just, I'm super excited to share it all with you. So thank you for watching again. We'll see you, we'll see you really soon. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> oh man. That will never get old. Never. Apparently Dudley Do-Right's ride is, um, I guess, not operating today. In fact, it's like completely drained of water. I wonder why. Interesting. Interesting to see it that way. I was looking forward to watching people get soaking wet on it. But I guess, uh, I guess that's not going to happen. Not today. Park is 
still still operating. Oh, getting wet now. Okay. And check it out. Right between the trees there. That's some uh, hurricane damage. Some of the wall from the Jurassic Park ride fell off from the wind, I'm assuming. You can see the exposed uh, metal frame in there. Thankfully though, it, it, it sounds like the dinos did not get loose. So that's a, good, that's a good thing. There's another look at the exposed metal frame there. Yikes! Woo! Oh man, that got very close to me. Glad I wasn't a little bit further. And I'm glad the ride is still going. It's nice to see it, nice to see it operating. Okay, that's it. Video is over. Thank you all for watching. See you soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.